you can come up to the view menu and you see an option here for header footer. Simple as that. You can also go to the schedule properties into the displays tab. You can, you can check this box here and that will do the same. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the header. First, I'm going to go ahead and add some content. And you do that by, right, by clicking on the little arrow on the top left. We can choose image in this case. We can go ahead and open that. For the height of the header, you can either increment and dec decrement with the arrows. You can key in a value. You can also click and drag the dividing line between time scale and the header. And it'll kind of show you a, pre a preview. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a section by increment incrementing that arrow there. I'm going to go ahead and add a, just a text section in this case. So here's where you can uh, apply some of these formatting characteristics from the toolbar. If you right click on just the background space in any given section, you can, you can kind of swap their position and move them left and right. So I'm going to add a third section for what we will, we'll put a table in here. The table in this case is a, is a pretty simple table. Uh, you can click to edit any cell. You can right click to add rows or hide the borders. You know, when in doubt, if you're, if you're wondering if you can do something, just kind of right, right click around and it'll show you some of the options you have. I'm gonna label this column, uh, maybe just event, because I'm gonna put in just a project start and completion and their dates. Now the way to get these values in here automatically is by right-clicking into the cell. And this shows you the preset values that, that uh, are tied to the project that you can insert. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the footer. So we give you this alert when you go to turn on a header footer because right now viewing a header footer and viewing the split screen at the same time is incompatible. You know, in this case, an extra tile, I believe, was added. For instance, if you add a footer and it ends up obscuring the bottom row where you might have some activities, we're going to go ahead and add another tile so that you can see that. For this demo, I don't want all that extra space, so I'm just going to go ahead and, at my own risk, remove one of the tiles just so that you can see them kind of in, in view with all the activities there. I might be able to shrink the uh, grid spacing a bit there. So we've, we've got a footer on the bottom here, if you can see it. And we're going to use this to populate in these legend objects. The last content type here is legend. You can come in and choose to add any type of object individually in a manual way. And it'll pop it in. You can give it a name. So if you come in here and at the very top, you have an automated legend option. We've separated this. There are kind of three types of objects you can represent in a legend. Just all your planning objects, all your resources, and any type of shape. Um, if we choose the first one here, it's just going to pop in everything that NetPoint identified that is in your schedule. But it's pretty easy. You can right click on any of these and just delete the ones you don't want. And let's go ahead and add some names to them. So if I see, if I say, see these are, you know, process equipment, you know, once you, uh, the idea is that once you label all, all of these legend objects, then you can kind of declutter your canvas a little bit. You don't need all those text objects floating around. But you'll see that after I added that process equipment label down here, it's not clashing uh, into the adjacent activity. And that's not, that's not cool. And we know we want to add another section for resources. I'm going to go ahead and do that first, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But if I add that section, now you also see that it went ahead and obscured a bunch of your legend objects, and we gave you this little warning telling you that something is off screen. Again, right click is your best friend. If you if you click in this, uh, if you just click in the background area of the legend section, you'll see an option here at the bottom that says align legend objects. Now you see they've been not only rearranged into their grids, but they've also been spaced out so that that label can now breathe. And the resources are just as easy, easy to add. You know, you see these resources. I think sometimes people have similarly used text objects to come, but now you can actually just come right click in here, choose the automated legend and add resources. And now boom, you've got your little key down there in the legend right away.